What is up everyone, I'm Gushi, and here we are with an updated tier list of all the legendaries in Ghost of Tsushima Legends. The last tier list is kind of outdated as I made it, like right when Legends released. Now that I have experience on all the classes, and have been playing around with these for about a year now, I wanted to update this tier list, especially with all the new legendaries in the game. So without further ado, let's get into it. So to start things off, we're going to go over what factors I'm going to take into account to determine where this goes on the list. And there's two main things I'm going to take into consideration. One, we're only going to be looking at the legendary perk. So for example, if we're looking at the Mist of Gata, even though smokes are pretty good at this moment, we're only going to be looking at the healing effect that it provides. The reason for this is because if we're saying this thing is good because of its base functionality, then we might as well just use an epic smoke bomb. And the second factor we're going to be taking into account is how good these legendaries are in their best situation. So for example, if a legendary is specifically good in the raid, but not for other activities like story, we'll only be looking at it in the context of the raid. Alright, so with that out of the way, let's look at our tiers. At our lowest tier, we got the motherfucking Ryuzo. Next, one above that, we got Taka with the feels bad, man. In the middle, we got Lord Shimura with that dishonorable face. But you know, Jin had to dishonor him to save the whole island. Next, second to the best, we got Happy Jin. And finally, for the first and best tier, we got any gear that is teabag worthy. So first up, we're going to be going over the legendary katanas. First is Masumune's Edge. Melee attacks have a 20% chance to deal double damage. And I think the best situation where Masamune's Edge is really useful at is the EO duel in Chapter 3 of the raid. Because Masamune's Edge has wind stance and you can roll wind master, using Typhoon Kicks to quickly take down her guard is probably the easiest way to beat her. Of course that 20% chance is pretty low, but when it does proc it's very noticeable. And because you could do more damage, the less time it's going to take to defeat her. Another reason why this is good is for the samurai or the assassin's ult. That possible chance of getting double damage could have you killing enemies a lot faster. However, a 20% chance for this to proc is really low. Because you can't control when that double damage procs, you can't really say I want to do double damage to this high health target, and it really just leaves it up to chance. So even though the double damage is really good, because you can't control when you get that double damage and it's basically up to luck, I put Masamune's Edge at the Dishonorable tier. Next up, we have the Wrath of Sarugami. Regular parry is disabled and perfect parry becomes a chain of three attacks. I kind of said this in my review, but with specific perks, this legendary becomes really good. Intimidating counter and leeching parry, along with multiple stat boosts to the perfect parry window, which makes it really easy to land perfect parries. This guarantees you three hits of counter damage. And keep in mind with Intimidating Counter, there's a 50% chance to make this an AoE attack to also damage nearby enemies. With Legion Parry, this also heals you, giving you the best of both worlds on offense and defense. I'd say this is specifically good for things like survival, which definitely helps you stay alive. And again, Chapter 3 of the Raid. Yes, this does require a defensive playstyle, but this will guarantee that you'll stay alive. And again, it's a guaranteed 3 hit counter attack. So because we're not relying on chance, and because it's a good source of offense and defense, I put it at the Happy Jin tier. Next up we have the Demon Cutter. Staggering a target has a 30% chance to throw nearby enemies. So first of all, staggering a target doesn't really have that much benefits. Because there's multiple ways to do direct damage to an enemy's health, which totally ignores the stagger meter, staggering a target doesn't happen that often. Secondly, there's only a 30% chance, which like I said before, really is just relying on chance. And finally, it just throws nearby enemies. This part is kind of good, as you can put on impactful throws to have enemies down for a little bit. But because impactful throws only last like a couple seconds, you could really only get one critical hit in before all the enemies get back up. At CND best situation, you could probably run it with an assassin using some kind of poison build to help take down an enemy's stagger meter. But keep in mind that it has to be the katana that fills the stagger meter for this perk to proc. If enemies get staggered by the poison damage, then this does not count. And so because of that, we're going to put this at the feels bad tier. Next up, we have the Master's Katana. In my last tier video, I actually put this on the top, but to be honest, I don't think I've ever used the Master's Katana in Legends once. The main reason why you'd want to use the Master's Katana isn't really for the increased stagger you get from switching stances, 
but instead the extra benefits you get from getting the master stance for each sword stance. So because we can get two perks now with the new mastery system, we can now have things like Wind Master and Moon Master if some of you guys really like using the Moon Master cancel, but also taking down those spear enemies with Wind Master really easily. Other than that, I haven't really found any good use for it. So I'm going to put it at the feels bad tier right below the Demon Cutter. Next we have the Stone Striker. Now Stone Striker has been a staple in the meta because this is the best option for all non-ultimate builds. Specifically for the Ronin and in some cases the Assassin because their ultimate is not the best with all the resolve gains that you get and Stone Striker giving us the ability to use Heavenly Strike at the cost of resolve is the best offense tool you have to spend your resolve. What makes this even better are its secondary perks where it does extra damage to staggered enemies. Again this is really good on the assassin who uses poison to quickly stagger an enemy making it easier to take advantage of the secondary perk. Finally the stone striker also repels nearby enemies. This is kind of like a mini stun giving you a free crowd control effect without using things like smoke grenade or flash bombs. For anyone using a ronin you probably use this already and because how useful and important it is we're putting it at the top at teabag worthy. Finally for our last katana we have Yoshitsune's hand. Staggering target has a 30% chance to cause knockdown. Following the trend you guys probably already know where this is gonna go. Stagger is not a good effect. 30% chance is not that high and this only affects one target unlike the demon cutter. So yep we're putting this all the way at the bottom at motherfucking Ryuzo. Next on to the ranged weapons. Starting off we have the Forbidden Medicine. So this is the only legendary I'm going to take into account the regular sticky bomb features because the Forbidden Medicine is the only bomb pack you can get on this samurai. Because black powder bombs are just so good in the game, unlocking bomb packs in general for the samurai completely changes its playstyle. But not only because of this, the Forbidden Medicine is probably the best option you have to heal yourself. One, because it's not on a cooldown, unlike other weapons, you can heal yourself anytime you want as long as you have ammo. This is really helpful when you're poisoned as you can quickly heal yourself without having to spend a really precious resource and putting it on cooldown. So with this legendary, this completely changed the meta, making the samurai one of the best classes to play. And so because of that, we're putting it all the way at the top at teabag worthy. Next up we have Sugaru Sight. With this you can shoot up to 3 arrows at once doing big bursts of damage. Now the one thing I'm really trying not to do is to compare it to the Skip Me Stone Bow. The playstyle for the Sugato Sight is completely different. This is really really good at doing big bursts of damage to high health targets. However the major downside is that we do not get headshot refund with this legendary. Other legendaries like the Weightless Spirit we actually do have it. So not having the ability to get ammo back makes you really rely on other methods like smoke bombs with munitions, the scavenger perk on your charm, and the hunter's perk 2 ability which lets you spend resolve to get some ammo back. And because of the really good burst damage, I'm actually going to put it at the dishonorable tier, yes above demon cutter and master's katana because damage is a lot more important than just knocking them down. Next up we have the infamous skipping stone bow. You guys already know what this does, even with the nerfs that came with the Iki island expansion, the skipping stone bow is still the best bow by far and should be the go-to for any hunter. One, with the bow reload cancel, you can quickly get a headshot and a body shot if there's an enemy nearby, making it one of the fastest ways to build your ult. And then with the hunter's ultimate, you can shoot up to 10 people with headshots, easily clearing out waves of enemies. And so you guys already know where this is going. It's going all the way at the top at teabag worthy. Next up we have the Weightless Spirit, or as other people like to call it, the Wasteful Spirit. This legendary perk makes arrows not descend, and I kind of put this perk into this category of things that make your job easier, but honestly really don't provide much. If you guys are already using a bow, if you just play the game, it's really easy to get used to the drop off, making this legendary perk officially the worst in the game. So you guys already know it, this is in the motherfucking Muso tier. Finally for our last ranged legendary we have the Heaven Sting. Darts have a 20% chance to instantly kill non-Oni targets. So first of all, 20% chance, not that high. Secondly, in Nightmare Activities we mostly have Oni enemies, which this does not apply. So the best situation to actually use this is when there are attunements. Most of the time you really don't see attuned Oni, but just regular 
popular mongols that have attunements on them. Instead of having to coordinate with a teammate, this gives you that small chance to instantly kill those enemies. The downside of course is that you're really reliant on ammo, and because there isn't a perk like headshot refund on blow darts, again reliant on smoke bombs with munitions, or ghost offerings. And again specifically because of that really low chance, and with all the nerfs to the amount of ghost offerings, I'm actually putting it kind of low at the top of Mulfurn Ryuzo. Next, moving on to the charms, we're starting off with Sarugami's Glare. Your perfect dodge becomes an attack that blinds nearby enemies. Because we have no stat boosts, to increase our perfect dodge window, this is just really hard to proc. In its best situation for those of you who are good at dodging, again it only blinds people in a small radius. Blinding enemies only lets you get a couple attacks in until they recover and start attacking you again. However, the major benefit is that it does do a spinning attack along with the blinding effect. So because of this AoE attack, and because you can proc this if you're good, 100% of the time, I'm going to put it at the Dishonorable tier. Next, we have Shogun's Fortune. This grants immunity to flash and poison effects. I'd say the major reason why you want to use this is when one of the world modifiers are toxic clouds, specifically in story missions, or sometimes at the end of survival boss waves. That could be really annoying. But again, this grants you complete immunity. I guess also in Rivals maps, one of the curses that you could send over is one that blinds enemies, so it could be useful in that situation as well. And so because this gives you complete immunity to two status effects, I'm gonna put this kind of in the middle, right at the Dishonored tier. Next we have Benkei's Last Stand. This actually got buffed to a 75% chance to ignore arrow damage. And you know, honestly, I didn't know how good this was until I actually started trying it out because of this video. And with the 75% chance, do you know how roll those odds? Not only does this count for regular arrows, but it also counts for watches. Watches are considered arrows, so if you're one who really hates the watcha modifier in survival, this is probably your favorite charm. I mean just check this out. Of course you will take damage 25% of the time, but a 3 fourths chance to not take any damage is pretty nice. Keep in mind this does not count for the Tengu, who shoots out those crows which aren't considered arrows. So I think the best situation you'll be using this is when the watches are a modifier. And so because of this, I'm putting it all the way at the Happy Jin tier. Next up we have Last Breath. Instead of taking fatal damage, heal for 50 health, and this only could occur every 5 minutes. First of all, unless you're soloing, you will always have teammates to revive you if you need it. The healing is pretty nice, as it does heal around half your health, but I'd say the major downside when using this is that there really is no indicator on when this procs. Unless you're continuously looking at your health, and you specifically look for when you get that 50 health, you really don't know if you have that extra life available. I'd say the best case scenario is in the raid, when there are multiple places when teammates actually can't res you. So the effect is really good, but because it's hard to keep track, I'm gonna put it right at the end of the Dishonorable tier. Next we have Enjo's Remorse. This lets you deal 15% bonus damage when you're at full health. My last tier list, I put this all the way in the top and some of you guys didn't agree with me, but hey, if you look at the leaderboard now, Angel's Remorse is probably the most important legendary that you'd be using. The reason being that this 15% bonus damage applies to all your damage sources. This includes range damage, melee damage, barrel damage, status effect damage, ghost weapon damage, everything. And so when you're going for leaderboards, timing is everything. That second you could shave off by getting 15% extra damage is really important. And so because this is useful on all classes, in a multitude of situations, we're putting it at the very top, again at teabag worthy. Next up we have Sacred Iron. Enemies that deal melee damage to you have a weaken applied to them. I think the best situation to use this is with an injury resolve build as it does require you to take damage to make use of its effect. Keep in mind that in some cases when you do block and the enemy goes through your guard, this perk will also proc as well. I'd say weakening isn't the strongest effect in the game but is pretty good. So I'm gonna put it right in the middle above Shogun's Fortitude at the Dishonorable tier. Next up we have the new Heavenly Rebuke. Again this gives you a Heavenly Strike and it gives you a 50% chance for a lightning to strike a nearby enemy. The lightning strike is kinda trash, but again the fact that it gives you heavenly strike, specifically on non-ultimate builds, is a really good option. Unlike the stone striker, which gives extra damage to staggered enemies, the lightning strike kind of makes up for it, but I'd say damage wise it doesn't really compare. So I'll still put it at teabag worthy, but below the stone striker. 
Next up, we have Restore the Rhythm. Hitting a healing drum will heal all wounded heroes and revive anyone that is currently down. In my video breaking down this charm, I actually think this is a better version of the Ronin's ultimate ability as it does an initial big burst of healing, really saving you from follow-up damage which mostly comes right after you use your ultimate. In this case, you do have to hit a drum, but the animation is quicker and you could actually use this from quite a distance away using your ranged weapons. Of course, you are reliant on how many drums there are on the battlefield, but because this gives you a free class ultimate, we're putting this pretty high up at the happy gins here. Alright, moving on to the ghost weapon one slot. First up is the spirit kunai. Getting a kill with the kunai lowers all the cooldowns on your character by 10 seconds. With the mastery system, you can now get super massive and hidden blades, which if you get 5 kills with this kunai, you can get 50 seconds off all your cooldowns. This is the only mechanic in the game that actually reduces your cooldown, I guess besides the stat that gives you cooldown reduction on kill. But because it reduces all your cooldowns, this is wildly unique and lets you use more of your weapons more frequently. This is specifically good on the Ronin because with your technique you get a 50% increase to ghost weapon damage making it a lot easier to confirm those kills with the spirit kunai resetting your cooldowns. Because of this really useful perk I'm putting it at the very top at teabag worthy. Next up we have the magma bomb. This basically gives you a smoke grenade in your ghost weapon one slot essentially letting you have two smoke bombs. Because sticky bombs have a lower cooldown than smoke bombs you can actually use this way more frequently making it a really good option if you need some crowd control effects to control enemy spawns or buy you some time to build your ultimate. This is perfect for things like survival or in activities like the raid when you just need to conceal yourself to complete a certain objective. So because this gives you two smoke bombs, I put this really high at the happy gin tier. Next up we have the touch of heaven. This sticky bomb heals allies on hit. When comparing this to the forbidden medicine, this is honestly complete shit. First of all, you can't aim it unless there's an enemy around. Secondly, you need to be close by the enemy. So if your sticky bomb goes to the wrong target, you get no healing. And again, this is on a cooldown. So you're gonna have to be waiting 90 seconds to heal yourself again. So this is probably one of the worst healing legendaries in the game. And honestly, with all the abilities that also heal you, I'd say it's not really worth the legendary slot. So with that, I put it at the feels bad tier. Next, we have Lady Sandro's Surprise. This gives you a 20% chance to cause enemies to hallucinate. The good thing about Dirt Throw is that it's an AoE effect, so you can actually hit multiple enemies at once, further increasing your chances to get at least one enemy to hallucinate. So technically, if you hit five enemies with the Dirt Throw, chances are at least one of them will hallucinate. However, the AoE range is not that big. In most cases, you'll hit two to three enemies, which with that 20% chance isn't really enough to hallucinate someone. Not to mention that Hallucinate isn't one of the best status effects in the game. Yes, it's a good distraction tool, but it does make enemies act a little bit more unpredictably. Again, not a fan of the low percent chance, so this legendary is going into the motherfucker muso tier. Finally, onto the Ghost Weapon 2 slot, we have the Mist of Yagata. This is another legendary that heals you and allies, just like the Touch of Heaven. This is on a really, really long cooldown of 120 seconds, but in most cases, you can't really fuck up where your smoke bomb is thrown. So it's more reliable than Touch of Heaven, so it's gonna go right above it in the Feels Bad tier. Next, we have one of my favorite legendaries, which is the Bottle of Liquid Courage. This refills less health, but also refills one to three bars of resolve. Because this is random, we can safely say that the average you get is two bars of resolve which honestly is pretty good. I feel like if you're playing rivals this is one of your must-have legendaries especially for builds that rely on your ultimate. This lets you do double ultimates pretty much back to back letting you clear out waves really quickly. If they honestly made it so that it doesn't heal at all it would still be just as good. So I'm putting this at teabag worthy but because it only gives you resolve we're putting it right below the forbidden medicine. Next we have our other legendary gourd which is Kenji Shared Brew. This, just like the Mystic Regatta, lets you heal you and allies nearby. In best cases, this is really good on the Ronin, as you could increase this healing for you and your allies with your techniques. 
However, the baseling is around half your health, which is just all right. And it's nice that they give you a little indicator, which gives you the area of effect where it'll heal allies. But I'd say one of the major downsides is that unlike the bottle of liquid courage, you can't use this while your health is full. So if you're specifically trying to heal your allies, but your health is full, this is basically useless. Because you can't use it when you want to, I'm actually gonna put it lower than the Mr. Vigata right at the feels bad tier. Finally, on to the last legendary, which is the Demon Seeds. This applies a weakened effect to affected enemies. So this kind of plays into how the call traps function. With the mastery system, it is pretty nice that we can get deep bags and fired up. With deep bags, you have an increased number of chances and a bigger area of effect to inflict that weakened effect against enemies, but you really have to wait for enemies to walk into it for that weakened effect to apply. Also comparing this to smoke bombs, smoke bombs last a certain duration versus caltrops. Once an enemy hits it, that individual caltrop disappears, decreasing its area of effect. I'd say the main activity you want to be using this in is Rivals, where you don't need smoke bombs to control enemy spawns, and so you can increase your ghost weapon damage to get more damage on your black powder bombs or other ghost weapon like sticky bombs or spirit kunai. And with that, I'm going to put the demon seeds in the dishonorable tier. And so here's the final list. In our teabag worthy tier, we have the spirit kunai, angel's remorse, skipping stone bow, forbidden medicine, bottle of liquid courage, Stone Striker and Heavenly Rebuke. Keep in mind guys, this is my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Do you think each of these deserve their rightful place? Let me know in the comment section down below and let's talk about it. I really hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please drop a like. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Hope to catch you next one and GG.